My name's Brian fucking Sona. I'm 19 years old and I'm from Liverpool, England. Right now I'm staying in Huntington Beach, California. You know, back then I'd been riding for Flip and I'd come out here to stay with Jeff and I'd known Andrew and Willie Santos and Klein for so long because Flip and Birdhouse were in the same building. I'd been over Europe with them. I was just coming up, you know, winning some of the contests in England and in the magazines and a bucktooth kid from Liverpool jumping downstairs. Could it be like, you know, the next, I mean, transplant over to America, I guess? So Klein puts me on Birdhouse. Tony's saying, okay, let's get a couple of the amateurs together in Huntington. Let's kind of just do what other companies are doing. So Andrew's coming out from Florida now. Um, I'm one of the AMs coming across from England. Ali Cairns, who's a vet guy, was coming across. And then you have Jim coming in from Connecticut. And I remember we lived probably like, you know, 10 blocks this way. And there was our apartment. And then there was another apartment with like Ellington and I think Piercy and Scotty Copeman, you know, Molinado, Alyssa, Shane Hale. And so you've got this crew, our crew, and you'd have Hayes around, you know, Beagle lived a few minutes away. You would have a 20, 30 man crew and you're eating together and you're hanging out and you're barbecuing and all these characters. It was just, it was an amazing and innocent time in skating for us because we didn't know what was happening. It was just fun. Yeah, yeah, oh, he's a Liverpudlian fella, like, um, like Jeff, so, um, but no, I, you know, he, he suddenly got into all into Bruce Lee and like, you know, and all this stuff and, and then I think he got in a little bit of trouble, he, you know, he, he beat some fellas up at some point and, uh, you know, and then after that he was like, right, I'm done with all this like carnage, I want to like chill out. And Brian didn't really drink too much. Yeah, it was more the, the skate rat knew everything about it. He'd be like, oh, have you seen this in Mouse? The guy Mariano does uh, whatever, the uh, nolly switch crook or something, or pop shove it crook. And he's like, look, the leaf sticks to his truck and then it flies off. He'd like know every little thing like that. And you'd be like, wow, you actually really study this. You know what I mean? And the interesting part is, is when you talk to him, I'm wondering if like he witnessed it from such a sober level, the chaos that... He remembers everything. Yeah, he remembers probably more than we do. And from a sober level, he, we probably looked fucking crazy. You know, the stuff that we were doing when we were drunk or just partying, like from a sober perspective, I don't even know how he lasted as long as he did. <laughs> Again, piss off. Oh, Ryan Sumner skates in his sleep. Yeah, Sumner does skate in his sleep, man. Straight up. He's he's serious, you know? He's serious about he was serious about his craft, you know, like he would train, man. He would like he would learn. He would just like, you know, if a video part was on the you know, he had to work on, he'd take it very serious, you know, like if he wanted to learn how to frontside flip over a hip, he'd go and probably do like a hundred of them or something like that. He was very diligent. It was cool, man. Like, I looked up to Sumner for sure. I look at kids today and they try and get stuff done and it's like you have to just be so on purpose and it was like that, you know? Like I know for me if I was in filming mode that's what it would be. I'm skating every morning for an hour at a skate park and I'm going filming the rest of the day. That's just the way it was. Right, he was focused, man. He was definitely focused. You know, I definitely seen Sumner party, but yeah, he was more of like, not like, fuck you guys, but I got my head on straight, dude. I know what I need to do. I didn't come all the way from England to fuck up. Yeah, Sumner during those times was the only person sober, from what I remember. But yeah, he was still here, he was like, just part of the crew anyway. I never got deeper into like the party side of it. Like I was the guy that if I drank, I got drunk off like three or four beers and then punched the fridge or threw something out the window. And before long, you're going from drinking to like smoking some weed, which I never got deep into that at all. Maybe did it once or twice, that was enough for me. And then I remember one time it was like, 
hey, you know, someone's got some mushrooms, why don't we just try them? And I'm thinking, oh, this is natural, like, it's natural, so I'll try them. And I think for three days in a row, me, Andrew, Jim, and Hayes, and Beagle did them. And Andrew freaked out the first night. And the next night, I freaked out. And the next night, Jim freaked out. And so that was enough with that. And I remember that first night of anyone ever doing mushrooms that we were just sitting, you know, on the floor, looking at the carpet, and the carpet's white, and we just kept thinking how it was sheep that was on the floor, and there's millions of little sheep. And we kept playing that um, door song, you know, come on, come on, come on, come on, now touch me, babe. Or, or don't you love her madly? Just sitting there laughing and saying how cold the room is. Like Sumner was like, look at the ceiling. And I was like looking at the ceiling, and it looked cool and everything, but I, I wasn't fully tripping or anything. But we always knew like Sumner was ready to fight. Like he just study Bruce Lee, go to the health food store all the time. He was ready to whoop some ass. He would always give everyone shit. He had all these like nicknames for me. I can't remember. I remember one of them was like here half or something because I wouldn't listen to him or I couldn't understand him. So I'd listen to like a couple things he'd say and then I'd just like zone him out and then he'd be like mad like you didn't even hear me. <laughs> and, and he had OCD at the time and it was like me and Ali like. It was really bad, his OCD. Sumner's OCD was so crazy, it would take him like half an hour to put his groceries in the fridge. And then, when he arranged them perfectly, me and Ali would go and move them around. <laughs> then he would bash up Ali. <laughs> there was a lot of torture, but mostly in good fun, like people were just teasing each other. He just seemed like he needed to find his religion and like be a normal person, because being tormented through like what he saw probably was, but yeah, he never really wanted to be like part of the drunks, that's for sure. Like, I mean, our characters really in the house for me, I was more the guy that just like messed with everyone and did crazy stuff. Brian would always be the one that would pull me away and like tell me these little odd, odds and ends. Like, like I was telling you before we were talking, like I think one time we were talking about eating and he would like be like, Tony, you, you don't have to finish all of it. You know, you just eat enough. And I know you want the rest of it, but just stop. But um, he he just had his his he's just in his own little world, and he had things that he would like he would do to like he had like routines and like sit ups and and uh, the way he ate and things like that. And I always found him interesting. So he wasn't around on the crazy nights and partying and stuff like that. You know, but within that crew, there was definitely kind of like you could almost see people's roles. Like I just liked to do tricks. I wanted to just go and learn tricks. I was just like, whatever we're going, I want to skate and do stuff. You know. Andrew was always just very solid and just like him, um, you know, hey, you know, he's the one driving, he's the one setting up the, the deal normally, he's the one doing the interview, we're the guys, the am's tagging along. You'd be going to a spot and you're like, want to see Dustin get the trick, you want to see Jim get the trick, you want to see Hayes get the trick, you're just like, let's do this. And the fact that we skated with everyone else anyway, you're going down to San Diego, you're filming with Jamie for some of your tricks to be in the friends section and misled youth, or, you know, you're out with the flip guys all the time, there's just, just, it just made sense, you know? He was more on a rally level, like, really focused on skateboarding when we were all being fuck-ups, like, and he was killing it, but, like, he, he would do stuff, like, that was fucked up too, like, when we'd stay at Re Reynolds' house or whatever, like, we would party late, like, Greco and Ali and I or whatever, and then he would, like, set his alarm at, like, five in the morning to wake everybody up just to torture them and put on the music really loud and be like, well, you, you kept me up all night, didn't you? Well, now it's my fucking turn, isn't it? It's my fucking turn to keep you up, you little cunts. You know, you'd have 10 dudes in town driving, you know, 12 hours to get to Cali, like, no way, we're gonna skate tomorrow, we're psyched. And then you'd have me and Jim in the morning, you know, four or five in the morning, in our underpants with a boom box in the middle of the room, pitch black. And then the Iron Maiden song, the trooper comes on, din, 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 and the light goes on, and all these guys are sitting up, like with eyes closed, bummed at us. Like that was the kind of things we did. It's just awesome to see, though. Just like, I mean, I can just picture it exactly. Picking Jim up from the airport, or Andrew being out here from Florida, or you know, Ali and all these people, and just what they've gone on to do, you know, in skating. But not even that, just how good of skaters everyone at the time, the things that were being done, you know, pioneering certain things, just seeing it. I'm almost more surprised that people be like, man, what's Brian doing? Like, what's he up to, you know? Because you become a Christian and people just think you go off like the psycho bus, but, you know, 
I'm raising three kids and they're doing what I'm called to do. So 